Imagine, believers, you have a deal. A deal that is so bad for the other party that you know very well that nobody who even uses 1% of their brain cells would want to agree with it. That's how bad the deal is. You know that if you even would explain the deal to a small child, the child would say no to it. If you have such a deal, how are you going to press it through for people to agree with it? The only way you're able to get through with that deal is if you mask it with another deal or with several other deals. An example, not that you're going to do this, but I want you involved in this talk. That's why I ask you to imagine it. Let's say that you want to scam people out of their collective wealth. Let's say you have a town somewhere and a lot of people in the town, they own a lot of gold and in their environment, there's a lot of farmland can be used and there's also a potential to construct a mine over there because there may be a lot of silver, because a lot of silver in that area. Now, let's say you want to come along and take away all the silver and all the gold. That means depleting the environment of its natural wealth and also the locals will lose their collective and individual wealth. You will not succeed if you come to that town and tell the people, hey folks, there's a lot of silver around here, so there's potential for a mine, and you guys have a lot of gold also. Just give me all your gold, and I want you all to move. I want you all to become homeless so that we can build a mine over here and extract all the silver. Is that going to work? People are going to look at you, they're going to laugh at you and ask you to leave them alone and to leave the town, or they'll attack you. And anyone will tell you, who do you think you are? Just to come and expect people to just lose everything so that you can gain at their expense. So you want them to agree with losing their collective and individual wealth. Well, wealth is never individual. You get, uh, I've already explained that. Wealth always happens in a collective and social context, but with individual wealth in this video, I mean your the reserves you have as an individual to operate in your wealth, whether it's money, whether it's estates, or you get what I'm saying. So how are you going to get the people to agree at their own expense? You have to come with some type of other deal that will hide the real intention of what you want to do. For example, you can to you to care with other people who also want to benefit from this exploitation, you can come up with a plan that in which people have to hand over their gold. For example, you can conduct a lot of false flag robberies and burglaries in the area, and then you will tell the people, you know what, it's not safe to carry your gold with you, let's put it at the bank, and so that the bank has the gold. So then you can use paper money instead. Because paper money can be uh, destroyed, can be ruined, but at least the gold is safe. Now, if there are a series of burglaries and robberies that happen, eventually the locals will think, you know what? It's better that our wealth is secured somewhere. So let's find a bank. And then you have your, your bank ready where the people can come and uh, put their, their money, in, their wealth in. So that's how you got all the gold from the people. So collectively, they lost their natural wealth right over there. Because as a bank, there are conditions that you can now use that gold to lend onto others. So practically speaking, they think that their gold is safe, but they really just gave it away and have some cheap compensation in return. That is what happened. Then they need this paper money to exchange goods and services. And you make sure that the prices rise of those goods and services. So eventually they are in debt. And because they are in debt, they now have to work harder or some of them need to sell their homes. So some of them sell their homes and others are evicted. And then all the people are gone. And now because they're debt, you can purchase the debt 
and now you can demolish those houses you can construct uh, that mine, you can build that mine and you can extract all the silver so in the parable i gave on to you there is this scam artist who wants to exploit the environment and the people but he needs their consent to do it because he does not possess the power nor the natural abilities to do it you couldn't just enter into the house of someone and take away the coal because he would knock him out or he may even die or he may be arrested so he needs their cooperation in their own exploitation but how are you going to get people to comply or cooperate with something that's at their own expense you need to distract them so in this parable there were fake robberies that happen and fake burglaries just convince the people it's safer at the bank and indeed at the bank secure it's, it's you have on paper it's there so you can file lawsuits to get it back but that you really get it back is not very likely so that is what the world is doing to you all the time that's what society is doing to you society cannot openly tell you that they don't worship god they don't want anything to do with the most high they just want to be relieved collectively and avoid life and to avoid life they need people to be victims so they can feel at ease so join this crime of avoiding life avoiding christ by dumping all frustrations on victims or become one of those victims and, sh and uh, we'll make things hard on you until you give us what we want control of your body your sexuality your mind your emotions and you won't have any you, you won't have any freedom anymore at any time you don't give in to what we want we have the right to inflict harm on you and it's your fault if society would come to you and tell you it just like that straight up you would run away and if they would do that they could never say oh it was just a joke they could never amend the, rela the relationship with you anymore so they come with excuses they come with facts to convince you they will tell you well people need to get along together there so there needs to be a common language with grammar and spelling there needs to be a currency to be used we need to consider one another they will come with emotional facts that you would say of course and you agree with those emotional uh, driven facts it's real okay it's, it's, so there's something wrong with that but they will suggest other things onto you namely that you need to hand over your discernment and without you being aware of it you will be handing over your discernment to the group in this case to society and because of that you don't use your natural intuition anymore you rely completely on what they tell you or what they want from you and later because you don't use your natural intuition you can't sense that something is off because you do because you go against your own intuition and after a while when your intuition finally breaks through your denial and you have to realize something's off it's often way too late that is how society operates that's the only way it can operate so believers pay attention to what is suggested onto you pay attention to symptoms in your life and pay attention to what when something is going on in society learn to look beyond what you're seeing learn to listen beyond what you're hearing learn to observe what people are saying or what they're not saying because society wants you to agree with them and when you encounter difficulties because you agree with them tell you well it's your fault well you didn't have to agree with us but here's the thing if you don't agree with them they will arrest you so if you don't agree with them they're the ones making things difficult on you and if you do agree with them and they leave you alone later you have difficulties will blame it on you so with society you never win you never win with society ever so keep on agreeing with christ who alone is worthy of your worship be at peace